who took the pain to obtain all approvals. And of course, all the leadership of Mass Movement Marvelous, Okpai Inka, and all the contingent that is shy of God bless you. Now, is somebody ready for the word? I'm hoping to spend about 20 minutes. Now, tonight, I'm just going to be talking to you about what I called mantles. Mantles. According to the instruction God gave me, that Asian mantles are being transferred in this season into new vessels. Now, let me tell you, a lot of people in industry and enterprise, people that have done resounding well in industry for about 15 good years of my life, I was in core finance. There were names in that industry. When you hear the name, like, names like Apostle A. Ford Lily, when you hear names like Gamaliel and Osode, a lot of them have passed right now. The question we have asked ourselves, who are the people that are taking this mantle? Even in ministry, a lot of highly celebrated men of God Maybe at best, right now, don't be distracted. Listen to me with rapt attention. Maybe at best, they have 20 years more. Like the Yoruba say, they have maybe probably about 20 years more. The question is, the mantles with which they operated and they bestrode this colossus called earth, who are the people collecting them? Are people positioned to even receive them? What is a mantle? I'm going to run very, very fast. A mantle is anything that covers or envelopes anything that covers or envelopes that is why beneath this earth this sand that you see the next layer of earth you see is called the mantle the mantle of the earth crust the covering of the earth crust please i'm hearing some side talks and noise please can i have perfect silence except you are praying that's why it is called the mantle of the head cross. A mantle is what is a covering is an envelope a mantle is a is, a, is something that is a layer that covers the book of Psalm 109 verse 29 says, Let my adversaries be clothed with shame and let them cover themselves with their own confusion as with a mantle. David was praying against his adversaries. He recognized the role, the, the definition of what a mantle is. He converted it to a prayer. Let them be clothed with shame as with a mantle. A mantle is a covering. What is a mantle? A mantle also, now that's generic definition talking about fashion a mantle is a cloak is a veil that symbolizes authority and responsibility let me break it down for you for some of you that were raised in the orthodox church when you see a bishop by his cloak you will recognize him by his vestment we know that is a mantle when you see an archdeacon you recognize him different from a canon when you see a provost you identify him different from an archbishop why because of the vestment he has on, that is a mantle. A mantle is a covering that does what? That's, that symbolizes authority and responsibility. Follow me, I'm going somewhere. It is worn by anyone in line of authority, power, and influence. In the medieval world, the Old Testament Bible, anybody that is of significance, your dressing is not complete until a mantle, a cloak is worn. Something, I mean, let me break it down well for you. Something symbolic or a, a representation of your modern day Agbada. By the type of Agbada you put on, we know the office you represent. Are you following me? By the kind of vestment you have on you, we know the kind of authority that you have. Let me flip it over to military. When you see a two-star general and you see those two stars, that is the insignia of that office. In fact, from his car, you see those stars. When you see a one-star general, I'll never forget when a five-star general passed Pangroove, bus stop, even all the area boys, they recognize. From a distance, when they saw the car, the five stars on the plate number, they were, ba -pow, ba -pow, ba -pow. You know, they were, they were laying themselves in front like this. They immediately, they recognize the authority that the person that is seated in that car carries, even though they cannot see him. But they have seen the mantles that signifies the office it represents. Are you following me? Every person of significance in the Bible wore a mantle. Prophets wore it. First Kings 19, 13. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave when he was running from Jezebel. He wrapped, that is, he had a mantle around him. The prophets wore it as part of their dressing. Is somebody following? Second Kings, chapters number two, verse eight. It says what? The next slide. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters when he was to part the Jordan. He always had it 
on him. That was the representation of his office. When people see an ordinary noble passing, when Elijah passes by his mantle, we know him. I'm going somewhere. It's an interesting conversation. Follow me. First Kings 19, 19. I'm giving you a lot of scriptures to legalize my position so that you not think, oh, this is just Toluchi's ideology. Oh, this is just a coined set of words to make sense. No, this is scripture. Scripture is final authority. So he departed from thence and found Elisha when he was to hand over, when his ministry was wrapping up. He did what? He found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plying with the 12 yokes of oxen before him and with the 12th. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle on him. He passed the baton. He always carried the mantle. It was part and parcel of his dressing. I'm going somewhere. A mantle is a representation of the authority of the office that a person operates in. From a glance, you know the line of authority he carries. From a, from a glance, you know his ranking in the office he occupies. It is part of his appearance. Now let's go forward. Let's go forward. Priests. You know, there's a diff there was a difference in the, in the past world between what? Priests and prophets. Exodus 28, 1 to 5. Priests, priests also wore it. It was part of their dressing. It seems I've seen to me that everybody that occupies some seemingly important and significant uh, office of spiritual authority always had a mantle. Get your brother Aaron and his sons among these like This is God giving specific instructions to Moses as to how he would design the appearance of the, of the priest he has appointed from the lineage of God. Aaron. Among the Israelites to serve me as priests, Aaron and his sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, blah, 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 make sacred vestments for your brother Aaron to symbolize the glory and beauty. Mantle also symbolizes glory and beauty. When people see your mantle like that five-star general, instantly they accord you the dignity and the respect that is attached to your office. Is somebody following? He said what? Consult with the skilled craftsmen, those whom I have gifted in this work and arrange for them to make Aaron's vestment, to set him apart as holy. The mantle also separates. The mantle is a form of consecration. That is what distinguishes you from you. That is what distinguishes and separates me from you. The mantle is what? Is an insignia of separation. He said what? Arrange for them to make a wrong vestment to set him apart as holy. To act as a priest for me. By the virtue of the office he's occupying right now. This is what, this is the appearance that will separate him from the common man. Somebody say mantle. Ah, they are sleeping. I say somebody say mantle. He said these are the articles of clothing they are to make. Breast piece, effort. Effort there is the mantle. Effort there is another name for the mantle. It was part of the prescribed requirement of dressing for a priest. For a priest to adorn at all times. Follow me. Even kings wore mantles. It appears to me again that every, anybody of authority and significance always had a mantle. First Samuel 24, 4. The men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will give you your enemy to your hands, and you shall do to him as you seem good to you. Then David went and steadily cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Cloak there means mantle. Mel, that's the Hebrew word, frequently applied to the robe of the effort. If you remember the previous scripture I read, instead of him, you know that story very well. Instead of him to kill King Saul, he instead just cut a part of his mantle to show that I came, but I did not kill you. Because why? He recognized the fact that as long as he had the mantle on, even though the Spirit of God has left him, he is still king. The vestment of kingship is still on him. David was wise and smart. He refused to kill Saul. Because the insignia of the authority of kingship was still on what? Saul. Now finally, even rich men, the nobles of that era, they also had mantles. Job 2, 11 to 12. Read with me. Now when Job's three friends, Job was a rich man. Definitely all his friends were also what? Rich men. Is somebody getting tired already? Heard all of this evil that had come upon him. They came everyone from his own place. They heard the disaster that befell Job. Everybody came to commiserate with him in his house. And they said what? I don't want to mention their name. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. I'm sure this is where he lost all his children. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and they knew him not, the countenance of Job had changed. His appearance had withered. What did they do? And they knew him not. They lifted up their voice and wept. They cried and they rented everyone their mantle. Even nobles had it. 
everybody of significance and importance had a mantle. An individual's authority, office, gender, education, vocation, status, rank can be distinguished from a glance. When I see you, what do I see? When you are profiled in the kingdom of the enemy, what do they see? When the kingdom of darkness appraises you, what do they see? It seems that everybody of significance in the world before now was distinguished by their mantle, by their appearance. Power, influence, position, authority, protection, identity, ranking and respect is easily recognized from the kind of mantle. That's how we know a, a noble different from a king. That's how we know a prophet different from a priest. Mantle. Somebody say mantle. <laughs> now let's do a very remarkable distinguishment here because I'm sure somebody is getting confused. Okay, is this mantle, does it mean anointing? Is a mantle anointing? Now let me break it down for you. Let me break it down. Follow me. Let me go back to that scripture. First Samuel 24, 4 that we read earlier. The men of David said to him, here is the day the Lord said to you. Now, you know that story. I don't want to waste your time. Even though the anointing had been transferred to David, he had been anointed a king in the stead of Saul. But as long as Saul had the mantle of kingship, he dares not touch him. That is the clear distinguishment between anointing and mantle. You can be anointed and not carry a mantle. You can have a mantle and your anointing is gone, just like King Saul. He was once anointed, but now the spirit of the devil reigns supreme in his life. But because of the mantle of the office he occupied, nothing was permitted to touch him. That's a clear distinguishment between mantle and what? The anointing. So, for to be anointed alone is not enough. To be anointed alone is not enough. Your consecration must rise to a level that you carry a mantle. Your anointing must get to a point that it becomes, you enter an office. A lot of believers live and they don't ever get to this point. They are just anointed. Listen to me. What is anointing? The ability to do. God's ability that is vested in people to get things done. And let me tell you, every seed of Abraham that is occupying the earth today has one level of anointing or the other. That is why a lot of modern day believers get confused. How come this person does not love Christ? He does not follow me to church, but he's prospering. In that lineage, probably, they have a grace, an anointing to be prosperous in business because they are also what? Descendants of Abraham. So some of you that go to Dubai, but they don't worship God, yeah? They don't speak in tongues, yeah? They don't even recognize the person and the deity and the divinity of Jesus, here. Yeah? But yet this nation is prospering, yes. They are also part of the lineage of Abraham. When you say Abraham's blessings are mine, it is also applicable to them. That promise of Abraham was not made to Christians. It was made to every living soul, every seed that proceeded from the loins of Abraham. So your anointing needs to step to the next. You need to occupy an office. You need to occupy an office. To be anointed alone is not enough. You need to do what? Step up your consecration for you to do what? To get to occupy an office. Now, let us go. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. Things to know about the mantle. Mantles don't die. Mantles don't die. Mantles are transgenerational. Mantles don't live. The carrier might die. The mantle does not follow them to heaven. The mantle are present here on earth. That is why the bone of Elisha, because he refused to pass his mantle to his successor. The successor he groomed fell his hand. If I'm to speak in your normal English parlance, Gehazi, he loved money much more than consecration. So many years after, some people were burying a dead man and suddenly Maridas showed up, Raiders showed up, bandits showed up and they quickly threw the body into the grave of Elisha. What happened? The man woke up and stood straight. Mantles don't die. Mantles are transgenerational. Is somebody following me? Mantles are transferable. I'm trying to skip a lot of scriptures. So please, follow me behind, behind the screen. Mantles are what? Transferable. Mantles can be imparted. Mantles can be received. I don't want to bore you with a lot of scriptures. But let us move back to the story of Elijah and Elisha. When it was time to go, he said, young man, stay, I have, stay here and have something to do at Bethel. He said, my Lord, I follow you everywhere you go. They got to another point. He said, young man, don't worry, stay here. I have something to do at Jordan. He said, uh, my boss, I go nowhere. He said, young man, stay here. I have something to do at Jericho. He said, my Lord, 
I go nowhere. Wherever you go, I will go. He wanted something. He wanted something. And Elisha asked him, what exactly, what do you want? He said, I just need a double portion of your anointing. He was not an ambitious guy. If it were me, I would have requested for probably a hundredfold. I would have, that would have been a crazy level of anointing. He was in power and fire. His ministry was fire from beginning to the end. He woke up one day, called out fire from heaven. When he was to even leave, chariots of fire. These were not chariots. Chariots, horses, fire. <laughs> Let me describe it properly. Horses that were made from fire was what came to carry him from here. What a man. A man, and the Bible said he was a man of like passion. Like you call Rika Salia to like Hero Salibosha. What kind of consecration made him contact that level of power, that level of unction, that level of grace, that kind of prophetic office that he occupied? But he did what? He said, Young man, when the chariots come from me, so far you can see it, you get it. If you can see it, you get it. If you cannot, you don't have it. And the Bible records. When the chariots came and they lifted him in a twinkle. He said, my father, my father. My father, my father. The chariot of Israel. He was mourning. He was crying. He was not sensitive. Little did he know that the mantle already dropped. The agreement was, if you saw it, you have it. The mantle already dropped. He picked it. Went straight from there to the Jordan. He struck Jordan into two. Just like his father did mantles are transferable every insignia of office you see operational on earth today that you desire that you covet some certain level of graces some certain level of unctions some certain level of manifestation that you covet if you desire it you can have it the question is how hungry are you I hope I'm speaking to people tonight that are really hungry that don't just want to exist as a statistic in their life there are 280 million people on the surface of Nigeria. Number. Yes, I agree. There are 280 million people in Nigeria. But there is a certain Toluro Kwe known as Toluchi. When it's time for you to manifest, what will be attributable to your name? When your name is mentioned, what mantle will be recalled? What office will be remembered? Somebody say mantle. You are not sounding convincing enough. Let's go on a little ride. Mantles are transferable. Elijah passed to Elisha. Moses passed to Joshua. But there was somebody. <laughs> he could not pass his own to an individual. He passed it to the whole earth. I'm getting there in a bit. Let's look at the different types of mantle operation on earth right now. There's what we call the name of mantle. The builder's anointing. The builders grace, rebuilders of broken walls. People who will rebuild nationhood, broken down nationhood, broken down institutions. The Neymar anointing. When somebody that carries the Neymar mantle enters an industry and nothing has been working in that industry, from that moment, he just seems to get a level of intelligence that seems that makes him that gives him the capacity to rebuild back that system. That's exactly what Neymar, Neymar did. He rebuilt the broken walls of Jerusalem. Somebody that restores national pride and focus and direction. That is somebody with the Neymar anointing. A Neymar word, mantle. Let me go forward. There is another one called the Daniel mantle. I love this one. I'm, sure, I'm not sure I've preached as much message on anybody in the Old Testament as much as Daniel. I have an entire governance curriculum. I call it governance 101. Taught from the book of Daniel. What is a Daniel mantle? Impeccable public servant academician and Daniel understood by books a new chronology of time he was an academician he was given to intense study the Daniel Mantle is a politician he's an ambassador he's a national advisor somebody that served four kings and not just four kings four crazy kings you know what it means to be the king of Babylon the center of world civilization. Let me, let me show you how, it, how, how crazy a king of Babylon can be. I take an example from Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar woke up someday. He had a dream and he called all the wise men, all the sorcerers of Babylon. And he said what? I had a dream. I will not tell you the dream. I want you to tell me the dream and also give me the interpretation. How crazy can a man be? And if you do not tell me, off with your heads. That is power speaking. 
that is power speaking. But yet there was a mantle that was resident in the life of somebody. He did not only serve one, he served two. He did not only serve two, he served three. In fact, the king held a feast someday and the writing just showed up on the wall. The guy was confused. His countenance dropped. What is this? And when he was moody, Ah, the refract came from his mother. He said, young man, worry no more. There is a man in this kingdom. He must be very old by now. But his brain is not old. His wisdom is not old. His intelligence is not old. The spirit of God that operates in him is ageless, is timeless. If you reach out to this man, he will crack this riddle. He will crack this code for you. Before then, the best Daniel did was he was a governor. He was a satrap. He became what we call, if you, had, if you had to localize it in the context of the Nigerian economy, he became a coordinating minister of Babylon. He became a prime minister. In a pagan civilization, somebody that carried the mantle, an astute politician, an ambassador, somebody that was given to a rigid life of prayer, he had a prophetic, extreme, accurate prophetic edge and he operated in the prophetic office, the Daniel Mantle. As I'm giving these descriptions, I'm sure somebody's thinking, ah, Nigeria needs this kind of a man right now. But I've come to announce to you tonight that the people we are looking for, they are right in this congregation. I didn't say that to excite you. It was what God told me. This is the assignment he sent me here to do. The people, the mantles I'm describing tonight, they are right here in this congregation. The Deborah mantle. <laughs> the Deborah mantle. Where men failed. <laughs> men gave way to cowardice. A woman rose up. A woman who was a judge like no other. Rose up. She was so prolific. She was such an inspirational leader that even men submitted to her and she led a nation to war she was not only a judge she was also commander in chief of the armed forces of the oh my goodness what a woman do I have women like that in the building tonight do I have females like that in the building tonight people who we operate with the Deborah mantle a name came forward in my mind right now I remember the, the Dora Akuyilis several people have headed Navdak since I was young, but a certain woman came into that system and flushed the entire system clean. Many years after she's dead, we are still talking about her. Do I have such females in the house tonight? People who we operate with the Deborah mantle. Let's move forward. Ah, I love this one. The Joseph mantle. Uh, governmental grace. Governmental grace. Purposeful public leadership purposeful public leadership in challenging times that's the kind of mantle that joseph had the economic policy of joseph is still operational till today till today when you go anywhere and you see those silos those grain reserves there is one towards uh adoikiti federal poly adoikiti just around afebala university there is one in the Badon. there is one on the way to your is now you when you see those things you remember joseph that was Joseph's economic policy. Policies that are so foolproof, it can be passed down from generation to generation. See the years that Joseph lived. His economic policy is still being used till now. What a governmental grace. Do we have such people that deserve such kind of grace tonight? Oh, you guys are not convincing enough for me. I love this one. The Bezalil and the Ololia mantle. People, skilled craftsmen to work all works of creativity. People that God will position as his agent in entertainment, in media, in mainstream broadcast, in journalism, everything that requires transmission across the air column. The Bezalil and Oliab Grace, Grace mantle. These days, you guys, I mean, an average person is a content creator. Even if you are studying medicine, you will find a way to create content out of medicine. Don't go and start recording somebody that you are operating on, on the surgical table. If not, the enemy will come for you. But, I mean, everybody wants to work, create content. But the, the, the issue is, 
you can be anointed as a creative. You need to step it up from the anointing to enter an office and you become the face of an institution. You become the guide of an institution. You become the pathway to an institution. One person that God will just vest with that level of authority. The mantle I'm talking about right now, they are not even physical. You cannot even see them. But there are certain rankings and statuses in the spirit. Follow me. I'm just about getting done. Ah, the Mary's mantle. Hey, deep wombs. Mm. Mm. Deep wombs that can birth destiny. I mean, Jesus had to come, but Jesus could not have come through any womb. Jesus could not have come through any womb. There were many virgins in the nation of Israel, but Jesus could not have come through any virgin. Jesus had to come through the womb of Mary. Wombs that are deep enough to carry destinies, to nurture destinies. People that will alter a landscape and the world will never recover. Do we have such wombs in this room tonight? Do we have such wombs in this room tonight? Ah, finally, if I'm to follow the words of that comedian, this is the Ogapapata of them all, the grandfather of all mantles, the mantle of every mantles, the mantle through which every other mantle is derived. Akari Sopalieke, put it on screen, let them call that name. Put it on screen, let them call that name. Put it on screen, let them call that name. Put it on screen, let them call that name. The Jesus mantle, mantle of all mantles. Listen to me. Whether it's the Deborah mantle you want, or the Joseph mantle, or the Daniel mantle, whatever kind of mantle, every mantle is in the Jesus. Oh, these people are not getting it. I say every other mantle is in what? If you want the Elijah mantle, it's in the Jesus mantle. You want the governmental grace, it is in Jesus' mantle. Listen, this mantle was so powerful. When Jesus was living, he could not pass it to an individual. Every other mantle before this was passed to an individual. But when this particular mantle rounded up his assignment, it could not be passed to an individual. He had to be given to an entire race, born and unborn. He said, go into the world, break the gospel, go to the world, disciple all nations. He said what? I will be with you even to the farthest ends of the earth. He said, these signs shall follow them, 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 them. Not these signs shall follow him, not these signs shall follow her. These signs shall follow them. As many that believe this mantle is available. Does somebody want this mantle tonight? Carusa palia ke bo si alama, ripakori sa pariente ligolosa, ifraki oli sa pariente ke bo si la kariata, faliko talia de bosa, ipakuri sa paria kata li so prie ke bosa. Oh, I just feel like praying right away. I think I should just stop this right here. Rakosi ala ke bosa, efelien ke tosa. What ranking do you want in the spirit? Ah, the biggest disaster is not a life that perishes. The biggest disaster is a life that does not live out full its potential. The biggest disaster is a life that does not even recognize the mantle that was available. Afira so talia pelika reskotolia tebo shata. Fakuraza pia tebo setehe. Before I lead you into 30 minutes of traveling, time is fast spent. How much time do I have left? How much time do we have left? Somebody talk to me so that I can pace myself. Akari se pelia tebo shata. Listen, this is not the time to leave. This is not the time to exit. This is the time which the purpose for which you came here is about to be executed. Every other mantle you covet is embedded right in the mantle of Jesus. Every mantle you covet is embedded in the mantle of Jesus. He's the mantle of all mantles. Whether it's the Deborah mantle, Jesus. Whether it's the Nehemiah mantle, Jesus. Whether it's the Moses mantle, I did not mention that, Jesus. A mantle so big, a mantle so large, that not one person could receive it. He had to be passed to an entire generation born and unborn.
I'm sure somebody wants that mantle. But if you are here tonight and you know you have never met Jesus, hey, everything I will do from this point does not apply to you. Everything I will do from this moment does not apply to you. You know in your heart of hearts that you have never met Jesus or you have been playing hide and seek with Jesus. <laughs> and you are here praying for mantles. You have even dropped prayer points. Ah, you are here to joke. I will not beg you. I will not beg you. You are better be running here right now. Let's fix first things first. I don't care who you are. Whether you are even a member of the mass movement in OAU. Whether you are already an ESCO. You know in your heart of hearts, Jesus is just religion to you. As you are dropping to pray for Mantu, I want to receive Mantu. Ah, I love Evangelist Toluchi. I love his grace. A level of governmental grace. A level of evangelistic grace. A level of apostolic grace. Oh, I will love to have it. Before you can get it, the owner of the mantle, the one who gives unrestricted, is here. He's the one that sent me here. Can you run here right now? I'm going to count just one to ten. If you are two or three, that's fine. If you are two or three, that's fine. Run here, run here, run here. You, are, you can even be in a technical team. This is the time to settle it once and for all. See, let me tell you, the glory of a family only needs to be announced through one person. The glory of a race only needs to be announced through one person. The glory of a tribe only needs to be announced through one person. The glory of a nation only needs to be announced through one person. The glory of a department of a profession only needs to be announced to one person just somebody that God will vest his mantle one of the mantles that shocks me in my life is the mantle of our father the Lord that is you such a grace for construction not just a grace that operates in the apostolic or the pastoral or the prophetic but a grace a builder's grace an extreme version of the name of grace to undertake donkey projects Raise that loop, raise that loop, raise that loop. I'm waiting for you. Jesus is waiting for you. This is not a time to be ashamed. This is not a time to be ashamed. I came for you. You can be an escort already, I don't care. You can even be in the mass movement or you, I don't care. You may even be part of the people that followed me from Lagos and Ibadan, I don't care. Run here. One. Two. Three. I will be singing this song as I wait on you. I will be singing this song as I wait on you. <laughs>